Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, so I'll be talking about uh, unlocking the unstructured with generative AI. And uh, I believe uh, we talked about myself already, but just just a little bit to add to what uh, um, Lauren said already. Um, I have been in this field for over 20 years, uh, worked with uh, some of the largest companies in the world to implement their data architecture and data centric uh, software solutions. I lead development and vision of our own data pipeline building products. So we do have ETL products, data extraction products that we work on and uh, um, I lead uh, the design development, all of that. So that's a little bit about myself. Uh, let's uh, move on to the actual uh, talk itself. Uh, the agenda is uh, starting with uh, uh, the challenges in unstructured data extraction. We'll talk about what we mean by unstructured data and uh, then we'll go into the operational dynamics of uh, generative AI uh, in extracting structural information that is. And uh, then my own take on uh, how to use Gen AI in data extraction. And then we'll talk about the future of generative AI in data extraction of unstructured data. So let's start with the big quote. Um, according to Gartner, the unstructured data forms about 80 to 90% of all the new enterprise data. Most of us, uh, we know about it already. Now the question is that how to get insight out of unstructured data. And uh, this is what we, we are going to be talking about. So what is unstructured data? Unstructured data is any data that is not defined neatly in rows and columns and we don't have the meta tags, as in the meaning of the data points established already. How it is found, some of the examples are shown on this uh, screen. Uh, it could be an agreement, free flowing text with a bunch of clauses and a table inserted somewhere inside it. Or it could be a form such as a W2. It has a bunch of fields, their definition and the values, but not in tabular form. Or it could be a web log. It could be, a, um, let's say, an article that is published in a newspaper. So that is, these all form unstructured textual data. Then it could be unstructured image data, multimedia in general, the video data, and so on and so forth. Today, we are going to be focusing primarily on unstructured textual data and how we can extract information and meaning out of unstructured data sources. So a little bit about the traditional methods of uh, data extraction. So of course, uh, the manual data entry has been around for as long as the, the reports have been around. Since the first day a new report was published, there was a need to look at the report and move some information from that report to somewhere else. So hand key information into target systems. And uh, of course, uh, anyone can do it, but it comes with its own risks, such as it is going to be security risk, error prone, and uh, time consuming and tedious and so on and so forth. To date, a lot of companies still use manual data entry, but uh, over the last uh, two decades or so, um, we have been using programming more frequently to use data extraction uh, for data extraction. Um, for image data, handwriting data, handwritten data, there is OCR and ICR have been around for over two decades, maybe more, where we convert the images into the text first, and then we start processing the textual data to get some information out of it. Um, the two key, I would say, um, methods have been around for um, at least a couple of decades. The first one being NER, that is named entity recognition, and second is text pattern matching. NER, of course, is limited to um, predefined entities. You can define, uh, you can say, uh, such as org names, locations, names, and dates, uh, it is able to do um, the, those name value pairs. It cannot extract table tabular data. So if you have tables inside the document, it won't be able to work on that. Now, the other one that is text pattern matching started out as uh, parsing of the text data and then uh, applying um, um, methodology of uh, regular expressions that's how it started out, then evolved into a full-fledged template creation. These templates, they're able to go inside any number of documents and extract only the data points defined in the template. 
So template is essentially a set of rules where it, uh, it has information about what patterns are found inside the document, such as a constant keyword, uh, maybe a wildcard, a combination of those two. Uh, sometimes uh, um, it can be um, uh, creating um, even the relationships among data points. So essentially a model that knows how to go inside the document, find the right, the right data points, and assign some metadata to it. And that's what is text pattern matching. By far the most popular uh, in the past couple of decades. And it has evolved, of course, um, you know, with uh, more and more complexity thrown at uh, it, uh, it responded. And uh, uh, it's a pretty, uh, I would say, uh, uh, a useful uh, method to uh, extract data from the documents. The one downside of it is the template creation itself. The way I described it, it can be tedious and time consuming. You have to predefine everything. You have to know that these fields I want to extract and these are the patterns found in these documents. And you are, you are building the template for a very specific structure. If the documents have variation, they deviate from that, uh, that pattern, it is not going to work. So that's how the traditional methods of data extraction have been till we meet with uh, machine learning and finally generative AI. So I'm gonna talk about the evolution of how it went to machine learning first and uh, then uh, more recently about a year and a half, two years ago, Gen AI came into data extraction for unstructured data. So let's start with uh, the machine learning models itself, uh, the methods, uh, the architectures. Um, started out uh, with the RNNs actually, and uh, even uh, the improvements of that, uh, the LSTMs that is, they both excel in extracting key value pairs. So we are talking about neural networks, recurrent neural networks, of course, uh, they do have uh, um, some context, but the long range dependencies is where they struggle. As a result, as you see on the left hand side, uh, the top uh, uh, graphic, uh, graphics there, the sentence is what time is it question mark. By the time it reaches the question mark, you can see the context is pretty much lost. It does not know what was the first word. So clearly, if you are very close to each other, let's say you're looking at a name value pair, it works beautifully. But if you're looking at longer sentences, the context is lost, the meaning is lost. So they did work pretty well um, on uh, key value pairs. And uh, of course, the improvement on RNNs were LSTMs, where we try to address <laughs> within our constraints of uh, you know, the, the hardware that, that was available at the time. Um, with the selective upgrading, updating and forgetting mechanism, we were a little better, but not by a whole lot. It still struggled with extracting uh, table information accurately. And uh, it, cannot account for sequences and positioning. Uh, in, uh, in general, long range dependencies will be a, a challenge with RNNs and LSTMs. So that's what has been the state of art for a long time with uh, machine learning in data extraction from the documents. Now came into picture the transformers and we all know what happened <laughs> um, with, the, with the release of uh, chat GPT, pretty much everyone I started to, to look into this area that NLPs and Gen AI, the problem is solved. But still, it has some challenges. So let's start uh, with uh, how it worked and what are the challenges. Um, of course, with the self-attention, it has the context. It knows uh, how the input uh, sequence is related to each other, much better context. And uh, with the multi-head attention, it, it can relate to even uh, the output and uh, create coherent uh, answers to the questions. Uh, parallel processing with the GPUs A100 and um, H100. Now, this is able to work with us and uh, pretty much go inside any document and get, get us any insight that is in there. Now, here is how the architecture, a typical architecture of uh, LLMs used for unstructured data look like. So we start with the unstructured data at the top. It could be text, mostly text, speech, images, social graphs. The first layer invariably is going to be the ETL, the extract, transform, and load that is, to bring that data to standardized form, 
to a form where it can be tokenized. So any data cleansing, scrubbing, um, standardizing that happens in the ETL layer, and then goes to tokenization where we can use a, a speech to text or TensorFlow or even hugging face tokenizers. Then come, uh, comes the layer of encoders, the BERT, GPT, OPT, you can use any of those and uh, we generate the pre-trend embeddings. Now our unstructured data is available in the vector form, clean and vector form. And then we apply the downstream language tasks. The tasks, of course, for our context, data extraction, very popular. It, it can be used uh, to ask, uh, we can ask summary of, uh, uh, of a document in textual form, summary of a table in aggregate forms and so on and so forth. We can use it for question answering, NLI, that is sentiment analysis, reading comprehension, language completion, and of course the multi-model tasks such as text to image and visual question answering. So this is a typical architecture of application of generative AI in unstructured data. Now our own take on um, generative AI uh, and how it should be used in data extraction. So we know about generative AI, um, the positives and negatives. Positives, of course, uh, it, it feels magical. And sometimes you upload a document uh, on ChatGPT and you can ask any question and it does answer those questions uh, pretty nicely. But we know that there is indeterministic side of it, hallucinations, and in data, that is not acceptable. So those are the challenges. So with a lot of experience in this area, implementing multiple solutions, we figured out that there are two ways to use AI. The first one is to use it in conjunction with a traditional method that is to build templates. Building templates, if you, uh, if you remember what I was talking about in the beginning, that building templates is time consuming, tedious and error prone, and it is kind of top heavy but once you build a template it works rather nicely you can deploy it and it can handle a large volume that ai would struggle with so if you want to get the best of both worlds how about we use generative ai to help building the templates at design time that is so this is how uh, we use ai to help building those templates at design time and once the templates are built we just deploy it in the traditional way. So uh, let's have a look how it is done. Um, what we do is uh, we take the schema that you want to fill. So let's take an example. Uh, you have invoices and you want to get the invoice ID, invoice date, shipping address, billing address, and few line items that you want to extract for which you know what are the data points that you want to fill. That's, let's call it our uh, output layouts or uh, JSON schema. So we use prompt engineering on um, an LLM, either base or fine tune. We'll come to that a little later. And uh, we send this information to the LLM to fill out that schema and give us a filled out JSON that is a complete output. And uh, once the output is, uh, is available to us, we run it on enough numbers so that we can see the patterns. And we have, uh, once we have uh, the information about, hey, JSON is always coming up with the invoice ID, and here is the keyword it is finding, we can use that in our template. So as a result, we run it on enough number of uh, sample documents, and we are able to fill out our template. And once the template is built, this template is now deployed in a traditional way. And traditional ways, basically, the user's starting point is, you give us unstructured file. There is an AI recommended template already. We apply that template to the data uh, file and the data extraction happens and it is available in a tabular format. Now you can send it to Excel or, or a database table or wherever you want to send it to. And uh, also you can apply your field verification checks, your business rules apply to make sure that your data is conforming to your standards. So this is, uh, kind of best of both worlds, applying generative AI and using the template-based data extraction together. Now, the second uh, way of using Gen AI is to use it to do extraction without use of any templates. 
So why it is needed? At runtime, we talked about uh, runtime can have issues uh, with uh, generative AI, with the hallucinations and uh, data sometimes, uh, the, in, uh, the indeterministic nature of uh, generative AI can cause issues. And why are we going with this? The reason for that is uh, the template-based solution has limitations when it comes to the variations in the documents. You need to know beforehand what you're dealing with. So if you want to handle that variation, of course, generative AI using, uh, being uh, used at runtime is the solution. So how do we build the solution? What we do is uh, we train it, uh, fine tune the LLM in-house. Um, so we take a large number of documents. Let's stick to the example of invoices. We take a large number of, number of invoices and uh, then fine tune the LLM. And uh, we use, this, uh, of course, uh, an inference to, uh, we have prompt engineering and uh, we send the data into it, the data, uh, sorry, the, the document into it, the data comes out. But the data that has come out, we have to verify that this data does not have any hallucinations. It is not creating some, some invoice ID that is not even there in the document. How do we do that? So for that, we added another layer that is similarity computation. So what we do is we take the context data, we created uh, embeddings, and we run similarity match, the cosine or semantic. And uh, similarity match will ensure that whatever data is extracted by this fine-tuned model is indeed the data that is found inside our original document. And this verification basically ensures that there are no errors uh, with the extracted uh, data. So the user flow is, we send, uh, once it is deployed, of course, the user flow is that you send your document, goes through the process, and you get your output along with your similarity score. And then you can have uh, some rules where your similarity score is uh, sufficient, it, it is acceptable, you accept the uh, extraction, otherwise you can reject it. So now this entire process automated can handle, uh, in, our, in our experience, about 95, 98% of the files with no errors, and then remaining, of course, has to go through the manual processing. So that's what is the state of the art with uh, using a generative AI in um, um, data extraction from unstructured documents. Moving on to uh, the future, where we are going with this. Um, the two uh, issues that we see, of course, with the, um, the LLMs uh, that are available. The first one is, uh, uh, and of course, I'll, I'll talk about what is happening. So with the enhancements like multimodal support and uh, of course the token limits extension um, is helping with uh, larger documents. We had those issues in the beginning where let's say that we are working with uh, um, a large document, let's say a PDF document that contains uh, thousands of pages. It was a challenge. The tokenization was an, uh, the token limit was an issue. Um, then if you're dealing with the, uh, with the, multi, uh, the, the multimedia, we have uh, the videos and text First, to convert that. So those issues, we are seeing that those are being addressed automatically, you know, regularly on a regular basis, new releases are coming out, and those are being addressed. The API limitations, they still remain, such as GPT-4 and Cloud3 are accessible only through APIs, um, with the challenges like latency, um, control, uh, network dependency, and security risks. In our experience, what we have seen is that in-house fine-tuned models are the way to go about data extraction. It offers complete customization and uh, there's no security risk. We are not sending data over the API. And uh, it is something that we can completely customize and uh, the results are also very, very promising. We have uh, moving on to uh, the next topic that is when we're talking about fine tuning, of course, we handle or we, we, we try to uh, work with all different sizes. Are the bigger models really better? The answer is no. In our experience, we see that smaller models, they're sufficient. Take smaller models, fine tune it with your um, training data set. And uh, that's what is, has produced the best results for us. We have uh, played with even small ones like Tiny Llama or Quen 1.8b and so on and so forth. So they are cost effective, they are more efficient, and that's what we recommend uh, for um, uh, use with uh, unstructured data extraction. In summary, um, we have uh, covered um, 
trends in um, unstructured data, um, how traditionally it has been used, uh, how traditionally we have uh, extracted data from unstructured sources, how it evolved with the machine learning and finally to generative AI, how generative AI is being used these days. Uh, inside generative AI, what are the best models? One is design time, one is runtime, how we can use in both scenarios, and uh, how fine tuning of smaller models is the way to go about um, data extraction from such documents. In terms of future directions, we are looking at uh, continued AI innovation, and the focus is on cost-effective solutions, smaller efficient models, that's what is the direction, and of course, uh, support for multimodal um, data extraction as well. So that's all I have in terms of talk, and uh, we are at a point where we can open the floor for Q&A. Right, our first question has come in. You said smaller models fine-tuned on your own data can be more effective than lo the large models. How much data do you do you usually need for fine-tuning to see those types of results? Good question. Um, so uh, let's take an example uh, of uh, contracts. So we had this use case where we were looking at uh, uh, contracts of a specific type and uh, we wanted to get answers to certain questions, about seven questions, and uh, those data points we needed to extract. And uh, we started out with uh, just a small set of documents. We had only about uh, 200 documents. At that point, our results were already close to 80, 85% accurate. Uh, we started to move, uh, add a little bit more, by the time we hit about 2,000 documents, our accuracy was pretty much 99% and up. So I would I would say that if you're dealing with, uh, of, of course, it depends on the scope of what you want to do uh, for and the complexity of uh, what you want to uh, extract from uh, documents. But for reasonable complexity extraction, just a couple of thousand documents is going to be sufficient, at least in our experience. That's what it's been. Thank you everyone for attending uh, the session and uh, I'll be available on the chat. If you have uh, any questions, uh, you can go to this uh, URL that Lauren posted, live.odsc.com. Um, I'll be monitoring it uh, for the next few hours. If you have still, uh, if you have any further questions, we'll be more than happy to continue our discussion there.